you've been studying the book of Revelation, if you've been coming for the past uh, few days, that the Lord has allowed me to come here. We've been studying the letter to the church in Sardis, yes. And we learned a lot of things there. We learned a lot of things from the letter to the church in Sardis. No? Uh, and so far we have just dwelt in verse 1. But the whole letter is goes from verse 1 to verse 6. Yes? Who wants to re start reading? Will you read this one? Or shall I begin? All right. Chapter 3 of uh, the book of Revelation. Or should I say Revelation? Uh, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Tom, 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 but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. You can continue. <laughs> Verse 3. Yes. Remember therefore how thou hast received and head, and hold fast and repent. Mm. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come to thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour will come upon thee. Amen. Yes, anyone? Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, mm -hmm. and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Amen. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life. But I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. Just a little bit background. So what we have discussed so far was the fact that uh, when the Lord raises, uh, when the Lord introduces, when he begins to write the letter, he, he begins with an introduction. The, as to who is this letter coming from. Yes? And we said since last year that the introduction that he gives, he raises an element from the revelation that he gave to the Apostle John, Prophet John. Yeah? You go back to chapter 11 there, and you find there he reveals. So John actually writes the, the, the vision that he saw of Christ and how he appears. Amen? And then he spoke three times. The Lord spoke three times. And then from the details that the Lord spoke to John and showed him and allowed him to write down, from those details, we understand that from thence comes the message, the instruction to each church. Amen? From there comes a particular instruction to each church. But it's very interesting that he raises just specific things, meaning he doesn't speak, he doesn't use everything there to speak to the seven churches, but he just speaks a few things to bring out the message to each of the seven churches. Amen. And we say it from each and every one of these instructions, or from each of these elements, comes the instruction, and embedded in that instruction is the rebuke to the church, the instruction to the church the promise to the church, the exhortation to the church. Amen? So when he begins, he says, and to him, to him, eh, from him who holds the seven spirits of God. That already tells you what he is going to deal with in the church. I mean, in this letter to the church. So there, therein, or therein, is embedded the entire message to this church. Amen? And so we have examined this verse 1 and we found out that when he's speaking about the seven spirits of God, we went to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 and found out what this, uh, the sevenfold spirit of God is. And then we begin to understand that he's speaking to a, to a dead church. 
No wonder he is raising the seven spirits of God because we understand that it is the sevenfold spirit of God that gives life to the church. Amen. We read on the first day that from the book of John 6, 63, he says, It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Amen. And then also from the book of Romans chapter 8, where he says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace in Christ Jesus. Therefore, understanding the fact that if this church indeed is dead, then that means this church is wallowing in carnality. Amen. That carnality has taken over this church. Amen. Just running through that. Meaning then that this church has lost the Holy Spirit and carnality has taken over. But then we ask the question, how come, are you following me? Mm -hmm. Am I confusing you? Yeah. Say, how come this church lost the Holy Spirit? Amen? Or should we say, how come this church is dead? How come it's called a church, but it is dead? Amen? Because we understand the Lord himself addresses this church as his church. Amen? As a church. He, you can even see the love that he, that he demonstrates here in writing to this church. To correct her. Amen? To rebuke her. And to tell her what to do, to repent. Amen? So you can see that this church is the church of Christ. But how come this church is dead? If when you are a church of Christ, initially as a body of Christ, you cannot be a church except that the Holy Spirit has transformed you. Amen? And we said, if this church has been transformed from darkness into light, and has been now been made into the church of Christ. Then that means at one point the Holy Spirit was in this church. Amen. That this church at one point had the Holy Spirit. But now the Holy Spirit left. Now that begs the question, how did he leave? Why did he leave? But now when we continue to investigate, you will realize that, wait a minute, something is not right. These guys have been going to church... They didn't even know that the Holy Spirit left because he's addressing them. He says, I know your works. You are dead. So see, this is news coming to them. He says, guys, you are dead. It's as if you, you, you could already see that they have been going on for some time thinking they had the Holy Spirit, but they don't. Holy Spirit has gone a long time ago. You see that? Then meaning that these guys have been walking in deception. Then that begs another question. Who deceived them to believe that they have been having the Holy Spirit all along, but the Holy Spirit was gone? Who deceived them? So now we see the deception, that someone deceived this church. And now you see also that this church has lost the Holy Spirit. How? Why? Amen? Mm -hmm. Those are the questions we were left with last time. How did the Holy Spirit leave this church? Why did the Holy Spirit leave this church? But now, I want us to see something before, before we tackle these answers. Huh? That, to see, if this church is dead, then what does it mean to be a living church? Amen? Are you sure? And what does it mean to be a living church? Just to, to get a picture thereof. Amen? Because it says, you need the Holy Spirit for you to be a living church. And when the Holy Spirit is not there, then you are dead. Amen? That the Holy Spirit, the sevenfold Spirit of God, living in you. Okay. So let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1. And just see the gospel in the book of Genesis chapter 1. And see how the Lord is using Genesis chapter 1 to speak to us what it means to be a living church. Amen? What it means to be a living Christian. Because we see a deception here. These guys thought they were living... But they were dead. That's a tragedy. It's a tragedy to live here in Moscow thinking you are born again. Yeah? Or, or you know, as, uh, you, you know, of course, someday you receive, I receive you, Lord Jesus, in my heart, and you have that assurance. Yeah? But then it so happens that along the way, you have lost the Holy Spirit and you don't even know. Because if the Holy Spirit has left this church, then that is saying to us that it is possible that 
your work may not be pleasing with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives because he warns us at one point he says do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God amen so that means the Holy Spirit can live a heart that is not pleasing unto him but now see this is very alarming that he can leave you and you are still deceived thinking he's operating in you it's like a, a stove that has been hot for some time, and then you just switch off the the, the, what? the, the electricity. It's still hot, but the current is not flowing. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of fact before the, 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 the energy that is already there, before it fades out and finishes. Amen? The power source is off. Holy Spirit has left. There is still some fire, but long gone. That's a tragedy mm -hmm. to walk in such deception. And I tell you, a lot of churches are walking in such deceptions, thinking they have the Holy Spirit. Maybe even holding on to some of this tradition just because, now nah, I was born here. Nah? Mm -hmm. Some of these things that, that are very, very deceptive. Who deceived this church? Okay, Genesis chapter 1. I couldn't help but just ponder. Uh, I think the Lord really uh, just kept bringing this uh, Genesis 1 to my mind. And uh, somehow, somewhere, I thought, hmm, what if there's a, there's a, there's, there is the gospel in the book of Genesis chapter 1? Amen? Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Okay, but before you read Genesis chapter 1, just quickly read for me. I don't know who wants to read. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Yes, 4, verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness mm -hmm. had shined in our hearts yes. to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who has ESV? Do you have ESV somewhere there? Yeah, somewhere I, there? ESV. Okay, yes. Do you have it? No, I think I can tell you. I don't know where it is. Yeah. Contemporary. Yeah. ESV. No, no, that's CEV. Right. ESV. English Standard Version. Oh, no. your, 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 computer, your computer, your small computer doesn't allow you to download that? No, I can actually. Can, uh, download yes. This. Okay, oh, good. Yeah. All right. Um. So, so, okay, we'll come back to the to, to ESV now. Okay. So it's for, it is God who commanded. Now, another translation, I think, is that is that NIV or, or NLT? NLT. NLT, yes. Okay, can you read NLT? Oh. Mm -hmm. And who has NIV? You have NIV? Okay. You have NKJV. Yeah? I have, yes. Okay, read NIV. NIV. For God who said, hmm. let light shine out of darkness, uh -huh. is the one who shined in our hearts to give us the light of the glorious knowledge of God in the face of Christ. Amen. Amen. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine <coughs> in our hearts so we could know the, the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. For God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. The apostle, yes. You read ESV. ESV. Uh, read ESV. Okay. Uh, ESV. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Mm -hmm has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of, the, of Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ. So here he's telling us that God in the beginning, he was quoting Genesis chapter 1 here. Amen. In the beginning, commanded light to shine out of darkness. Amen. Mm -hmm. says, this God has also shown in our hearts. Amen. The light that gives us the knowledge of the glory of God that is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, pondering on this verse, I was thinking, wait a minute, he's talking, he's, he's drawing from Genesis 1, the gospel. Amen? Mm -hmm. He's speaking about the light. What if we read Genesis 1 in this perspective, from this lens, da? in this perspective of finding the gospel in Genesis 1? What if Genesis 1 was speaking the gospel to us, was instructing us how to live, what it means to live a life transformed by the Holy Spirit. A life that is a born again life. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because when you see there, I want us to read it, but it's so long, it's 25 verses, it's not 26, or oh, even longer. 
Da? I want us to read it, but 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 bear with me as I summarize for you. Okay? We we just we, you just uh, confirm with what I'm reading here. Da? Uh, you see, it took it took six days to create. Da? Day one, he created what? Light. Day two, he created what? He he separated the water from the waters. Day three, he did what? He, he separated the the water from the land. Da? And then day four, he did what? Ah, and then after that, then he commanded the what the 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 the, 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 the vegetation, yes. And then day four, he commanded what? The light to shine out of the darkness. I mean, the, the he commanded he, he created the lights and the stars, da? the sun and the moon and the stars. And then day five, he did what? He created the animals, da? And then he did what? He commanded them to what? To be fruitful. And then they and then and then after that, you come to day six, and then he commanded the sea creature also, yes. And then day six, he created what? Human beings. Human beings. But now, look at verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen? Amen. And then you come to verse 2, you see a desolate state. Amen? When you go to verse 2, you see a desolate what? State. It says, and the earth was without form and void. The Amplified said, and the air was formless. It says, it was an empty waste. Amen? And the earth was void and without form. Formless. For, without form. And an empty waste. He's speaking a state of what? Desolation. He's speaking a state of, and then he says, and then he adds on, he says, and darkness was upon the surface of the deep. So this was really a very huge catastrophe that has befallen the earth. Amen? Mm -hmm. And when you look at this, you see the life of a man that is not regenerated by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You look at this and you see a life that is filled with darkness. You see a life say formless. There is no shape. Amen? Amen. An empty waste. Now you remember it says, uh, without Christ, we are nothing, no? And everything that we do is just down the drain. Says, you see a life, you see a life of a person that has not met the grace of Christ. Amen. But then the hope comes now in the second part of verse two. He says, and the Spirit of God was hovering upon the surface of the waters. Now, now you begin to see the need for the Holy Spirit now in this life. Amen. That now he's speaking about a desolate person. He's speaking out of a worldly person, a person that is walking in darkness, a person that is covered in darkness, a person that is a child of darkness, a person that is a child of the devil. And then he says, but then the Holy Spirit was hovering upon the surface of the deep. And then God said, let there be light. Now here you see the transformation that begins to take place when we are being transformed into the kingdom of what? Light. Amen? For he called Paul and he says, I want you to go and win the, and take them from the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. He tells Paul in the book of Acts. Amen? Mm -hmm. So now here you see, now when the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life. He says the first thing now is, he commands the light of God to shine in your heart here. Mm -hmm. Now we go back to, is that 2 Corinthians? Now this is what Paul is talking about here. He says now, for the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness in the beginning there, has also commanded light to shine in our hearts. And then this light bring, brought the glory, the knowledge of the glory of God revealed in the face of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? The first thing he does is he commands his light. And then there begins the transformation now. Amen? And then when he commands the light, and then you go to the next day, and then he says, now there must be a separation. Now you must be separated from the world. Now you must come out of the world. He says, if you go to the, some, some way, don't know whether it's First or Second Corinthians chapter 6, Somewhere there he says, come out from among them. Let him that is named after the name of the Lord, let him that bears the name of the Lord, come out from among them. Now here he's, he's commanding what? He's commanding you now to be holy, to be different. Amen? To be the difference in wherever you are. To come out. Let there be now a distinction between the old hunger and the new hunger. No, 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 no. Here now he's talking about the distinction now between the hunger and the world out there. 
Amen? Amen. Now, now they must see a difference. He says, let the water above and the water beneath be separated by a chasm. There must be a space there. We must see the water above and the water beneath. Separation. But now, it's as if that separation was not enough. Then now he goes on to divide further the earth. The what? The, the water from the, the, from the land. Amen? Another form of, tra of what? Separation. Speaking now of the transform, of the separation in your heart from the sin that you used to commit. Now your heart must be separated. Mm -hmm. The sins you used to commit no longer. Mm -hmm. You see these two separations. Mm -hmm. Being separated from the world. Being separated from what? Sin. From sin. But there's also another separation that takes place in the house of God. Mm -hmm. Because you see there are some brothers they go to church and they have three girlfriends. <laughs> Amen. So there must be a distinction now between you and the brother that is just hunting for girlfriends in church. <laughs> if indeed he is a true brother. Now that's, that's bad. Amen? Mm -hmm. So there must be, a, because he's saying, judgment begins with the house of God. And he's saying, some are foolish, some are wise. And the foolish will remain. Now that means there must be a distinction between the wise and the foolish religion in the church, in your life. Amen? I think we're running out of fun, but let, let, me, let me try and get this to a, to a close. Now, now after that, and then you see now he's commanding. Now he says, now let the earth bring forth fruit. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then bring forth yield. Then he, he's speaking about all this fruit and the herbs that must bring forth. Now here now, after he has shined his light in your heart, and then he has called you to be separated. Now he's saying, now there must be fruit in your life. You hear now John speaking. He says, he says, repent. Amen? And then after that, then he says, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Now these are the fruit of the Spirit in the book of Galatians chapter 5. Love, joy, peace, patience. That means now your life must begin to emit certain fruits that are characteristic of a separated person. Amen? Mm -hmm. that, that prove that this one has indeed been transformed by the grace of Christ. That this person is no longer the same we used to know before. Amen? If, if you are the brother who used to have three girlfriends, now they see that this guy is not even, he's not even asking about who's that girl. These things are different now. The way he looks at, at women now is different from the way he used to look. The fruits now are beginning to show forth. Love, you, you see compassion. You see the peace of God in his heart. You see faithfulness. You see even self-control. Mm. Amen? He says, let now fruit begin to show forth in your life. He says, he says in the book of Matthew, okay, we'll get there when we go to the next one. Now, he's saying, let the fruit begin to show. Let them begin to show. Let them begin. They must see now fruit in your life. Amen? Fruit in your life. Fruit in your life. And then after that, then he says, now let the light shine. Amen? Now, it's, it's, it's as if you hear him say, now when these fruits begin to show, this is now your light shining into the world. Because you hear him now speaking in the book of Matthew chapter 5, he says, you are the one, the light of the world. The salt of the earth. He says, let your light so shine. He says, men do not put a what? A lamp under a bushel or under a basket or under a table. They put it on the lampstand for everyone to see the light in the house. Amen? Everyone to see. He says, in the same manner, let your light shine that they may see your good works. Amen? And glorify God in the Father. He says, you are a city on a hill. Now this is now, he says, now let the light shine. Let your light shine now. As you do this work now, this now is you shining out the light. Now you are beginning to shine the light of Christ into the world. Now you are beginning to expose the sins of men by the way you live and by the ways you speak. Amen? Yes, that must be visible. You don't speak and then they say, ah, you just sound like whoever worldly person. No. Amen? Now you are beginning to shine the light. And then after that, after he speaks about now you must shine the light, Amen. You see the, the, the transformation that's taking place there. It says, now you are beginning to shine the light of Christ. And then after you begin to shine the light of Christ, then he goes on to say, that, of course he's saying, the, 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 the greater light to rule during the day and the lesser light to rule during the night. He's also speaking about shining your light even in the darkness, in the church and in the world. Amen. In the church and in the world. Your light must what? Shine. Now, he goes on to talk about, he goes on and says, as, as he's still talking about this, this, this line, then he's talking about dominion, ruling over the day and ruling over the night. But now, b before I begin to talk about that, but you see the next day, he's now commanding animals to be created. He's now creating animals, sorry. Amen? 
Now, now the Lord is creating animals. Amen? Now, and then he says, now be fruitful also. He says, let the animals, now he says, let the animals be, let them come out from the water, let them come out from the land, this, and let them be fruitful. There was, there was a fruitfulness at first, amen, that emits from your life. Now, there's another level of fruitfulness. Now he's saying, now, now, now you must multiply. Evangelize the Jesus you have now. Now you must evangelize the light that is in you. Now you must multiply. Now we must see fruit. Now we must see people now coming to know the Lord Jesus because of your testimony. Amen? Yes. And the work of Christ in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Now he's speaking about what? Fruitfulness. Now, evangelize Christ. Evangelize Jesus. This is now for you now. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. He says, now evangelize Christ. Amen? You see evangelism multiplying. Hallelujah. You see the mandate he's speaking there. And then he says, when this happens... Hallelujah. You see, he says, let them, let them what? Let them divide according to his kind. Let, them, let, 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 let the animals be, huh? yeah? No, not be, huh? He says, let the animal bring forth the living creatures according to its kind. Amen? Cows and creeping things and, and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. Now, bearing fruit, as he says somewhere in the book of is it Timothy 2, 2, 2 Timothy 2, 2, where he says the things that are passed on to you, pass them on to faithful men, that they may also pass on to faithful men. He's talking about multiplying, that they, this gospel must not just, should not just remain with you. You must pass it on, you must now make disciples unto Christ, mm -hmm. for Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then after that, he begins to speak about, let us create men in our own image, in our own likeness. When you see this now, it's as if now he's crowning now this work of redemption that he's putting in you. He says, now, when you begin to do this, when all these things are being fulfilled in you, it's as if you hear him say, now you are walking in the image of Christ. And he says, now you are, being, you are being transformed into the image of Christ. Now you are taking on the image of him that shone the light in your heart. Because if you go to the book of Romans chapter 9, this is the very same thing he's talking about. He says, for you are predestined to what? To be conformed to the image of the Son. He says, let them be after our own likeness. And then he says, let them have dominion. Now he is speaking of, now he's speaking of being transformed into his image. When you walk this way, bearing fruit, bearing fruit in your life, bearing fruit, disciple making, and what else was that? Shining your light out in the world. It says, now you are being transformed into the image of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And it says, and now you are walking in the authority and the dominion of Christ Jesus. Because if you go to John 3, not John 3, but John 1, 12, it says, to them, to as many as received him, to them he gave the power to be called children of God, sons of God. Children born not of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of the Spirit, but of the will of God. Amen? Amen. Now, this constitutes a life of the Spirit. Amen? Amen? Holy Spirit working in you, bearing fruit in you, affecting the world around you. Amen? Now, of course, when you, when you speak about the sevenfold Spirit you said on the first day, that here you, 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 he's also speaking about wisdom, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, the fear of the Lord, the spirit of God, what was the spirit of mind, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of counsel. Amen? But just wanted us to go back to Revelation 1 and see as he speaks of the gospel here and what constitutes a living church. Amen? Hallelujah. Before now we begin to break down this, why did the Holy Spirit live now? Amen? But we don't have enough time today. But we'll, we'll, we'll touch on this next time, can I show? Because the Lord allows us. I just wanted to share this one because it was burning in my heart. And I thought it was really uh, something very, very, very uh, insightful. Amen? Mm -hmm. That the gospel is right there. Mm -hmm. This is what the Holy Spirit has come to do in our life. Transform us from darkness to light. Amen? And indeed, there, is, there are many scriptures to read. In fact, even as we are going to talk about how, why did the Holy Spirit leave this church? Look at those, 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 those 
those answers. Why does the Holy Spirit abandon some people? Well, abandon is as if you say, you know, I don't want you anymore. But no, that's not what I mean. Why does the Holy Spirit leave? What causes the Holy Spirit to leave? Because we are not supposed to be separated from Him. He is very precious. If He's not in your life, as you see here, then death ensues. Death in the camp. Death in the church. Amen? If the Holy Spirit is out of the equation, you may have all the love you want. You may have all the faith you want. You may have all the whatever kindness. But if the Holy Spirit is missing, ah, desolation, destruction, devastation, death. Amen? Now you, you, you see a life that is meaningless. Because He is the guarantee when the Holy Spirit is in your life. Is the guarantee that you will make it to the rapture. If it's not there, no guarantee. It's like if you go to Ashan, you bought something very precious, or maybe you go to a video, you buy something very precious, and they put a guarantee stamp. That, that means when this machine is broken, you can bring it back. And they give you a new one. Or they fix it for you. But if that guarantee stamp is not there, they say, are you sure you have guarantee? Say yes, but we don't see. If they don't see, they just don't see. It's not their fault. Or maybe it's therefore, I don't know. But if the, if the guarantee stamp is not there, amen, mm -hmm. then still, we cannot do anything for you. Say, when the Holy Spirit is missing, when He's not there, when you, have, when you have so indulged yourself into sin, such that it caused the Holy Spirit to just, because He's very sensitive, He cannot dwell with sin. Uh, Paul says, know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, who has been given unto you. Amen? The Holy Spirit is given unto you. It's a precious gift. Jesus said, I am going, and when I go, I will send you another one. He says, you send us another one, another comforter, another advocate, another one exactly like Christ Jesus, to lead us into all truth. That means when the Holy Spirit is not there, there goes deception now. Amen? That's why this world, this, this church was falling into deception, because... The Holy Spirit was missing. He said, he will lead you into all truth. And when he is not there, deception takes over. Lying everywhere. Lie to whatever. Even tolerance to Jezebel becomes the order of the day. Amen? And then they begin to ask you to sow money, to sow a seed, so that you can get your breakthrough in 10 days. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Amen? And I really encourage you, your daily life, never forget the importance of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? Amen. Treasure Him. Pray to Him. Worship Him. Bless Him. Amen? Amen? Ask Him to fill you every day, every minute, every hour, wherever you go. Acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? Ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit every day, everywhere you go. Ask Him for guidance. Ask Him for counsel. When you are sick, ask Him to heal you before you run to the doctor. Because He is the master healer. Amen? Amen. Even though you pray, you, don't feel, you, you still feel the pain, just pray and trust. Trust Him. Amen? Amen. Uh, trust Him for guidance. Everything that we do in our lives, we need the Holy Spirit. Because if we don't walk according to the counsel of the Holy Spirit, and I've said it in my own life, when we don't walk according to the counsel of the Holy Spirit, then we begin to follow our own mind. Yeah? Then carnality takes over. And, and Because we, we, sometimes, of course, the Holy Spirit doesn't give us everything that we want. Yeah? And sometimes you ask Him for things, and he doesn't give them to you because it's not for you. Or it's not right for you. It's not the right time for you for you to help. No? But then you feel, feel like these kids that just throw tantrums. No? And, and you just want to do things your way. Amen? And then when you, just, when you just decide to ignore the Holy Spirit and say, let me do things my way. There you go now. Deception. Amen? Amen. Distraction. Now you find yourself... In, even in sexual sin, and you are like, Lord, why are you living? Why, why did you allow me? What, what do you mean, why did you allow me? <laughs> oh, Lord, I didn't know. No, there's no such thing. I didn't know this, there was sexual sin ahead. No, there's no such thing. <laughs> there's no such thing. I didn't know. Uh, it's, it's deception. Amen? Because if, the Holy, if you're walking according to the counsel of the Holy Spirit, ah, he, he protects us. Amen? If you just allow me to say this, I don't want to say it, but so long as you say, we will say it next time. <laughs> say, it. say it. Go ahead, go ahead. But, no, I will say it next time. I will say it next time. Okay. No? Say it. 
I'll say it next time. You might because forget. just remind me. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit will remind me. And you know, it's really something uh, uh, I've seen. I actually wish this discussion can continue yeah. because then uh, there's a question of uh, brought in the name out of the book of life. Yeah. You see, the, that, that part there. Yes. Uh, and he said, there are some mm -hmm. who are in part of you, but yes. they've, uh, they've kept. He says that there are few, few. in Sardis, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get there, yeah. that who have not soiled their garments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those ones will inherit. And I will not blot, blot their out. name. Yeah. But then it raises the question that, you know. What about the others? What about the others? Are they are they not blotted or they will be blotted out? Uh -huh. That's what that's not the issue. Very important question. Yeah. Because you, you see his love here. Mm -hmm. He's really taking his time and resources and so much power to speak to them and say, Hey, please repent. Mm -hmm. He speaks repentance. He says, Your ways are not right. Look, you are missing the Holy Spirit. You have, you have it's like it's as if he's just waking them out of their deep sleep. They fall in asleep and they didn't know that they were sleeping. <laughs> Have you done that? <laughs> it's not you were studying, but then your eyes were closed. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word today. Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill us here tonight. Transform our hearts. Shine the light of the glory of God revealed in the face of Christ Jesus in our hearts. Shine this light in our hearts. Transform us. Help us to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to bring forth fruit in evangelism. Help us, O Lord, to evangelize the name of Jesus, to exalt the name of Jesus. Help us, O Lord Jesus, Father, to walk in the authority and in the power and in the newness of life that you have called us to. Help us, O Lord, to bear the image of Christ in this world. Wherever we go, Lord, help us, O Lord, to be faithful unto this work that you have called us to. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this caution you are giving us in Revelation. This caution you are giving us that to be careful not to fall, not to become that dead church. And I pray, Lord, that this devotion will not be a dead devotion. And I Amen. pray, Heavenly Father, that you feel this devotion every day and every time we meet here for fellowship. Father, help us. Correct us where we go wrong. Father, I pray, Lord, that we will not be proud. I pray, Lord, that you cast away any pride from our hearts and any form of deception that will cause us to that, that wants to cause us to think we are doing things right when we are not, if indeed we are not doing things right. Help us, O oh Lord, to, to be to, to have teachable hearts. Correct our hearts. Give us soft hearts that can take uh, your correction, O oh Lord, your, your rebuke, your instruction, O oh Lord. Help us to walk in repentance, true repentance, to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day of our lives to walk in holiness, to not soil our garments, that our names may not be blotted out of the book of life, that, that we may always be before your face, O oh Lord, that we may have a place among those that sit around the throne, Father. And we thank you, we bless you, we give you glory and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.